the e-commerce world has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. When when I started my research in this space, we were in a world where a you would order much less online, and if you did, you would probably expect it to arrive within four or five days. Nowadays, um, the expectation kind of is you order something on one of the platforms that everyone knows and you are kind of expecting to get it the next day. And I'm pretty sure if we talk about this again in two or three years from now, the expectation will be probably same day, if not sub same day. So with that comes a lot of diff a lot of complexity that leads to challenges that the logistics industry has to somehow solve. One is, for instance, inventory management and inventory positioning. In a next day world, you already need like nine, 10, maybe more facilities around the country to, to reach the same number of people uh, within basically a one day lead time. As we are moving, strongly moving towards kind of on-demand e-commerce, where you just order something and get it within an hour or two, that just doesn't work anymore. You have to be more local. You have to have a more fragmented network of facilities. And that also means that all your inventory gets fragmented. You need to really be smart about what, what kind of product and in what quantity you store where, um, because otherwise you're just gonna duplicate inventory all over the place and that's extremely costly. So inventory management and network design is clearly one of the biggest challenges and related to that are challenges like demand prediction, for instance. If I can predict more accurately, not just what my demand for the next month is, but maybe what my demand in lower Manhattan within the next two hours is, then that is a huge game changer for me, obviously, in terms of reducing my overall inventory requirements and being able to offer faster, more reliable service to my customers, which they eventually, hopefully, value. To prepare for kind of this, this race to the bottom in Lost My Logistics, if you want to call it that way, I think there's two things people need to keep in mind. Um, it all boils down to being able to design networks that are made for this kind of service, not just retrofitted. So very often we work with companies that operate on legacy infrastructure. Say 10 years ago, it made sense to put a big warehouse somewhere and now the landscape has changed and customers are expecting different lead times, expecting a different portfolio of products to be purchased online. And they're trying to make it work out of that legacy infrastructure. But if you really want to do it right, sometimes you have to make kind of take the leap and redesign things from scratch. Obviously you want to leverage the infrastructure that still makes sense. But for instance, if you have a warehouse 40 miles outside of the city, and you want to offer two hour delivery, that's just not going to work. So you need to invest in infrastructure that is dedicated to these high uh, speed services, basically. The other thing is you need to invest in analytics. So a lot of logistics companies historically have been focusing on um, optimization problems, usually had dedicated teams that would work on let's say, the, the engineering side of building and operating logistics networks. But let's say there's no, there's there's not that many companies who have a dedicated data science team, for instance. So actually the race to the bottom or the, the race to this kind of supreme level of service is also a race for talent um, and finding the right people who can build the next generation of algorithms that your company might need. Because the skill set of these people is slightly different from, let's say, the engineers that you used to hire 10, 15 years ago. AI is still so much of a black box. I mean, it's become better now that these chat bots are out there. People suddenly realize what these models can really do, or at least they kind of have a better way to empathize with what these models might be able to do. But still, it's very much a black box. And sometimes I feel like um, executives come here and say, hey, let's invest heavily in AI because it's going to solve all our problems automatically. And that's just not really what's happening. All that is to say that if, if you kind of want to dive into this 
space as you, as a company or as a researcher or whatever your role might be start small identify problems that you understand very well already so don't pick problems where you have no clue how to solve them anyway pick problems that you know how to solve like routing or i don't know maybe pick a, a simple product group where maybe inventory management is actually quite straightforward and try to solve that problem with a machine learning approach and once you figure that out you can always add complexity you can always add additional topics try to invest your money smartly into relatively simple to solve problems in order to gain experience and to build talent these methods are still relatively nascent they have huge potential but we still need to understand them better but um, yeah don't don't think that you can just build an ai model and throw your entire supply chain at it and it will fix it miraculously that's not going to happen yeah.